What's up guys, JV2017 here. Today we're going to talk about how we can all prepare for the Far Harbor DLC. It's only three short days away now and I know we all want to hit the ground running and make sure that our characters are fully equipped to handle the new content. In this video we'll discuss the requirement of this DLC, how it will start, perks you may need, and items you should bring along on your journey to Far Harbor. Before we begin, I want to let you all know that I will be live streaming my survival mode playthrough tomorrow afternoon here on YouTube at 3 p.m. Central Time. If you can't make it live, it will be automatically uploaded to YouTube right after the stream is done so you can watch it from start to finish. Also, I'll be doing a full Let's Play of Far Harbor once it releases on the 19th, but I haven't decided if I want to stream it here on YouTube or just record and upload episodes like I did with Automatron, so let me know what you prefer in the comment section below. On to today's video, let's start by looking at the requirements to begin Far Harbor. The only requirement for starting Far Harbor is to complete Getting a Clue, which is a main story quest during the first act of the main story. This means there is no level requirement whatsoever, and you don't need to start a new character to start this DLC, you just have to complete this mission. And you'll probably already be at least level 10 at this point in the story, but it's kind of interesting. You can most likely start this before you could start Automatron, which had a level 15 requirement, but there's no level requirement for Far Harbor. Just a quick refresher if you've forgotten about the main story, getting a clue is the main story quest right after the Soul Survivor has saved Nick Valentine from Vault 114. So the main quest to be completed before this are Out of Time, which is where you leave Vault 111, the very first one. Then you'll have Jewel of the Commonwealth, where you find Mama Murphy and Preston held up at Concord, and they send you to, of course, Diamond City. So you find Diamond City, you're done with that. And then finally, Unlikely Valentine. That's where you go and visit the detective agency. Nick isn't there, and you have to go and rec rescue Nick from Vault 114 from those gangster guys. So once you've done all of that, you can get Getting a Clue from Nick, which involves tracking down Kellogg. Upon completion of getting a clue, Nick will be available as a companion, which just makes sense as the requirement to begin Far Harbor due to the nature of how we're going to start it. So overall, from the beginning of the game, this stuff, all of it can be done within the first few hours, maybe the first five at the most, unless you're playing the new survival mode, in which case it'll be a bit longer for you. But overall, it's not a steep requirement by any means. Again, there is no level requirement to start Far Harbor. A lot of people ask, how are we going to be able to start Far Harbor? And I don't have beta access. I haven't played a single second of Far Harbor yet. But if I had to guess, judging on what we've seen so far from DLCs and how they start, it's going to be some kind of quest from Nick Valentine himself. And that's how it started with Automatron. We just had a, a quest when we hit level 15. It just popped up in our quest log. For this, it makes sense that after we complete getting a clue, the quest will appear in our quest log from Nick Valentine to start this. And as we know, we're starting this whole quest line in this DLC. Pretty much the narrative driver for this is that Nick Valentine's detective agency has a new case to track down a missing girl. So I'm assuming it just makes sense that we'll get this quest from Nick Valentine and most likely it'll take us on some kind of boat to Far Harbor. We saw at the beginning of the Far Harbor trailer there's kind of a boat arriving to Far Harbor. I'm sure it'll be something very similar to that kind of like the ferryman you know I think his name was Tober or something weird like that that brought us to Point Lookout in Fallout 3. Some very similar kind of scenario there. I'm sure they'll pay homage to that DLC which I personally really love but I'm very sure that we're going to start this deal to see by some kind of boat and also some kind of quest from Nick. Overall, I'm sure it's going to be very self-explanatory. There's going to be no secrets about it. You know, you're just going to get the quest. You're going to start the DLC. It'll be really easy and you'll be able to see how I do it if you actually want to see me start it on my playthrough of Far Harbor on the 19th. So hope you guys are looking forward to that. Next, we're going to talk about perks, and these are just a few perk suggestions, things that make sense to bring to Far Harbor, you know, based on what we've learned so far and what we know about this DLC. First is Aqua Boy. This makes sense because there's a lot of water. There's been some leaked images of the Far Harbor map. Nothing I'm going to share here on the channel, but there's plenty of water. And obviously, Aqua Boy makes sense if we're going to be in the water a lot more often. I believe that for the most part, water is pretty avoidable in the main vanilla part of the game. I don't think Aqua Boy is really necessary, but in makes more sense here in Far Harbor, so definitely a perk worth considering for this DLC. Next is Rad Resistant, and I would say take this because there are several references to crazy radiation levels in Far Harbor. We know that the creatures there are really insanely mutated because of how much radiation there is. Also in the trailer, we get a small snippet clip of some insane radiation that we really don't even see outside of the glowing sea. So there's going to be some crazy radiation, some really crazy creatures there, and taking Rad Resistant makes sense for a little more radiation resistance, especially if you don't plan on taking or bringing power armor. 
My last recommendation is Rifleman, simply for the fact that we have lever action rifles. Finally, in Far Harbor, I'm so excited to have this in Fallout 4 and bring this out to the rest of the world and play with new lever action rifles. And Rifleman, of course, will buff the damage for those weapons. Of course, we also have the Fishing Gaff, that new German submachine gun or assault rifle, and then a harpoon gun as well, maybe one more gun mixed in there. But this is the thing I'm most excited for in terms of the new weapons, the new lever action rifle. So Rifleman will buff that damage big time. Another consideration that makes sense is Ghoulish. That's way down at Endurance 9. But if you're already way down there, you've got that much Endurance, you probably already have ghoulish because it's pretty helpful in certain situations but it'll heal you with radiation instead of hurting you which is an interesting mechanic so if you're already way down there good kudos to you ghoulish is a good idea here as well Finally, there's a lot of useful gear you can bring, but these are a few things that I thought of, you know, for this video for you guys. First off, Rataway and Radex. It makes too much sense. There's going to be a ton of radiation, so bringing these products to kind of get rid of that radiation that you're inevitably going to suffer makes sense. Make sure you're stocked up on those aid products. Also, hazmat suit is a good idea just to bring just in case, in case there's a really extremely irradiated area, which again, we've seen in the trailer. It looks like there is at least one really extremely irradiated area. You will need that hazmat suit to kind to mitigate that radiation. I think it's generally also a pretty good idea to bring power armor. Even if you don't plan on using it, you may need it. And also, we know that there are at least three more settlement workshop locations to build on in this DLC. And so, if you bring power armor, even if you don't use it, you have it in your back pocket. We know there's going to be power armor frames to store it in, so it'll be safe. I think it's just a good idea. Even, you know, I think we should see some power armor on the island of Far Harbor. That would make sense. I sure hope we do. But just in case, I think it's a good idea to bring some power armor armor for that extra radiation resistance and if there's just a tough enemy that you need to kill power armor definitely helps with that next it's a good idea to go into that legendary weapon stock that you've been keeping and get out your exterminators weapons and the exterminator legendary modifier does plus 50 percent damage to mire lurks and bugs this makes a ton of sense we're going to be facing a lot of those types of creatures in far harbor and i'm sure the exterminators legendary modifier is going to apply to a lot of those creatures so if you don't have one of those you can just go up to Sla salem excuse me salem in the top right of the map and do the quest for Barney Rook to get the Reba 2, which is a unique hunting rifle with the Exterminator's legendary modifier, so that'll definitely help you out, especially if you bring Rifleman to this DLC. Overall, it's a perfect legendary modifier for this DLC. Totally recommend it. Finally, you should consider bringing Mirelurk Cakes if you don't want to take Aquaboy. It's a pretty good alternative. Of course, Mirelurk Cakes give you 30 minutes of underwater breathing per usage. That's a pretty long amount of time. They give you a ton of health as well, so Mirelurk Cakes are a pretty good aid item that you can bring if you can craft it. If you've got the materials for it, it's not too difficult, you just have to kill some Mirelurks before you bring it to Far Harbor. That's all I have to share in terms of tips and getting ready for Far Harbor. So I'd like to hear from you guys. How are you preparing? Is there anything you would add to this list for everyone else watching this video? Please share that in the comments section below. And also, I'd like to know, are you starting a new character or nah? Are you just going for your main character that you've done everything with to experience Far Harbor? Let me know what your plans are in the comments section below. Alright guys, today we looked at how to prepare for the upcoming Far Harbor DLC in Fallout 4, and next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel, so stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for Far Harbor DLC, my survival mode playthrough, Bethesda.net mods, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace!